Jacinda Ardern. I, I, look, I'm totally convinced about that, right? Uh, and if you, I was trying to work out uh, when was the last time in New Zealand political history when any political party had a 20-point jump in its polling in the space of a fortnight. I mean, I... I well, I, I can tell you, James, it was Don Brash in 2004, and, uh, you know, he nearly made it. After he Ottawa, play. after the Ottawa points. speech. Yeah, yeah, after his classic racist mm. diatribe on the beaches at Ottawa. Yeah, he had a huge jump mm. in the polls um, trying to get the, the bigoted vote from New Zealand's Pale Mail style collection. Madam Fox, who's going to be the next Prime Minister of New Zealand? Um, oh, look, I think it's a really close race. I'm actually... Mm. I uh, think that um, Bill English did very well in the debate the other night. Um, Jacinda got some good points across, except when it got to the question about raising Māori out of poverty and she put on her cloth cap uh, socialist uh, unionist perspective again and said, until you, um, until you fix poverty and put food in the bellies of our children, we can't teach them. Well, that's the excuse they had throughout the entire 80s and 90s, which allowed um, Māori and Pacifica in this country to flounder at the bottom of every education statistic, while everybody made an excuse that they couldn't teach them because they didn't have books at home or shoes on their feet. Now, that's rubbish, and Hekia Parata has proven that it's rubbish, uh, Charter schools prove that it's rubbish. Māori medium schools prove that it's rubbish. Uh, in Huntley, where you have an uh, area of great disparity, the top performing school in this nation is Rako Mangamanga. David Seymour, who is going to be the next Prime Minister of New Zealand? I'm going to ask you all this question. So, so far, James is saying mm. Jacinda Ardern. Madam, I'm not sure who I you're saying. I think it's too close to call. Right. I think it is. David Seymour? Look, it's a very close election, and I'm glad we're having this discussion because third parties actually will make the difference. That's right. Um, I, the way I've said, said it is, look, uh, Jacinda Ardern is always going to be a shooting star. The only question is whether New Zealanders are going to make her Prime Minister before she starts the descent. Didn't, uh, and didn't, that's pe very didn't, didn't people say the same thing about John Key? I remember mm. people saying, I remember people in the Labour Party saying, John Key's a shooting star. The only question is how long before he starts the descent. Well, as yeah. it turned out, it was eight years. Yeah, exactly. And I suspect that her descent will be a little bit quicker. You know, the difference between her and the current lot and Helen Clark and Michael Cullen's government is that Clark and Cullen, had, had, they'd lived through the 70s. They'd, they'd seen what Muldoon did to New Zealand. They'd been members of the Fourth Labour government. Uh, they did actually have some sensitivity about the sensibility around the world. Um, these guys are the first generation of student politicians mm. who will be a government. And someone like Chris Hipkins thinks there's nothing wrong uh, with ringing up your mate in Australia, using parliamentary privilege to try and play games, political games across mm. the ditch. That's seriously dangerous. Mm. People need to look at Labor's industrial relations policy. How old are you? Which is back how, to the 70s. How old are you? Yeah, I'm, I'm 34. You are a first-term 34-year-old yep. yep. and you're being condescending about the Labor Party. Yep, that's right, because I'm not promising to be Prime Minister. I'm promising to introduce ideas to a government that does actually have experienced people. Uh, that's why I'm supporting Bill English to be Prime Minister over Jacinda Ardern. That's why I vote for ACT is a vote for centre-right government, uh, because actually that other lot are a little bit dangerous. Okay. And I've got every right to, to call them out on that. James Shaw, I know that the point of this discussion is mm. to do more than reduce politics to some kind of horse race, sure. right? Mm. Yeah. But we need to talk about your poll ratings. Yeah. Where are you sitting, do you think? Uh, based on the best data that we've gotten, I think Radio, Radio New Zealand's poll of polls has us on, I think, about 6.8, something like that at the moment. Um, the last set of polls has us creeping north, uh, and that is the direction of travel that we want to be in. How brutal have the past few weeks been? Actually, the past few weeks uh, have been great. So I've spent the last couple of weeks out on the campaign trail anywhere between Queenstown uh, and Whangarei. So you should be bugged, yeah. right, by now. You yeah. should actually be the walking dead, basically. But you are rather enjoying this, aren't you? I'm having a great time. I'm having a great time, John. I and, honestly and, am. And what is yeah. great yeah. about the time you're having? Look, so this is obviously my, this is my first campaign, uh, not just as a member of parliament, but also as the leader of the party. Uh, and so this campaign has a different quality to it from the previous campaigns I've been a part of. So I have been all over the country, um, you know, east, west, north, south. Uh, and I'm getting to interact with communities and with groups of people from different mm. walks of life that I would never have had the opportunity to otherwise. And it is a fantastic experience. And people, like, I mean, you know, you talk about the, the hunger for change. I mean, this is why I'm saying with such confidence that Jacinda Ardern will be the next Prime Minister, because on the ground, I really detect that strong mood for change. Mm. Will the Greens be back in Parliament? Yes, absolutely. Will the Māori Party be back in Parliament? I can Madame guarantee Fox? it.
Put money on it. Okay, so <laughs> in order for that to happen, you have to get 5%, which the poll suggests is highly seat. unlikely, or a seat. Now, That's right. the seat you hold is Waiariki. How is Te Aurora? The, seat, uh, it, uh, the yeah. party holds yeah, is Waiariki. Yeah, yeah, yeah. So um, Tūtoro, lots of polling have them close. Our internal polling don't have them as close when as you talk others. About, when you talk about them, you're talking about Te Aurora and Tamati Coffee for, for Labour. Yeah, right. Who is a strong Labour candidate. Well, he is a strong Labour candidate, but Tūtoro um, Flavel has a proven track record as a very good man. Minister is reliable, has great integrity, and he is well known around the traps in um, Waiariki for actually just being a down to earth guy. He's always at the marae, he's always working for his whanau. Do you think he'll win? Absolutely, guaranteed. Now, what happened last time is he won, the party got 1.2, 1.3, which meant that you came in on the party vote. That's right. This time you have Howie Tamati running a very strong campaign in uh, Hauru, right? That's right. And so if you win two electorate seats... Oh, we plan on winning more than that, right. by the way. But that imperils your ability to get back in on the yeah, party vote, doesn't it? absolutely. Absolutely it does. Uh, we need to either have more um, party vote than we do seats, or I have to win my seat. That's the only way back Ikaro in. Rafati. Ikaro Rafati. And you are a way behind there, aren't you? I'm a little way behind, and our polls have us, um, have me about, our internal polls about 6%, Labor's internal polls about 8%. The poll that Marai did on the weekend was 16%. And, but you can feel that. There is a strong Labour loyalty. The loyalty is not to the incumbent MP, it's to Parikura Horomia mm. and to the <laughs> Labour Party. They've okay. held that seat for 70 years. So yeah. I felt that there was a really good swing till Jacinda came in. So our people are looking at the polls going, we could change the government. And you feel that on the ground. You go door knocking, they want to change. Uh, and so the polls are reflecting that and it, we need to call that back because they need partners and they need an independent voice because you look at the Māori MPs inside the Labour caucus and they are hamstrung by their leadership. Every time they punt up an idea that they think might be good, they're told, get back in your box. We don't want that cope up a Māori idea. That's not our policy. And I'm yet to hear Jacinda come out and say strongly exactly what is their policy around treaty, around um, Māori rights and water, around uh, the real Māori language being taught in schools. Uh, there are so many Māori um, specific issues that Labour are campaigning on that they think they're going to be able to have the voice for, yet I'm yet to see one policy from them that says so. Uh, one of the things that also hasn't been talked about much is climate change, and James Shaw will come back and talk to you about that, but I want to go to David Seymour and talk about Epsom. Are you going to win it? Well, the polls have got me 16 points ahead, um, and the level of recognition and warmth I get knocking on doors and so on uh, is much greater than last time. What response um, do you get? Uh, the, the biggest difference this time is that it used to be, you know, hi, I'm David, C and now they say, yeah, yeah, we know, welcome. Um, so that's that's a big difference. Um, and a lot of people just tell me unsolicited that, you know, we're going to vote for you, so that's really nice. Why? Um, Why are they going to vote for you? Uh, a couple of reasons. One is that I have actually taken being an electorate MP very seriously. Um, you know, it's a real honour to be sent by your neighbours to represent them in Wellington mm. uh, and to be the last line of defence on a lot of issues. People have issues with the healthcare system, ACC, immigration, taxation, council, etc. Uh, so I've been there for them. About two and a half thousand people have come through my office. Uh, but the other reason is the simple logic. Sorry to interrupt. That, two and a yep. half thousand people have come through your office mm. in the same way that Peter Dunn worked being an electorate MP very effectively. So they've come to cl uh, talk about block yep. drains and all yep. yeah, the and classic. Look, and, and look, Everything. some of them. Yeah. Some of them. <laughs> and look, some of, some of them. Uh, 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 you could end in a phone call. Um, others, I was on your show a That's while right, ago absolutely. with Anna Carolina Bertram. You know, yeah, we've been yeah, fighting yeah. beside her for, and her family for two years. So you think um, you've got it? Uh, look, at all the indications look that way, but I'll never be complacent. Um, what it does mean is that me winning Epsa means every party vote for ACT counts towards getting more ACT MPs, uh, and that is critical in this election because, you know, I hate to say it to James, but, you know, the, the polar poll is actually going down. It's still being held up by those old polls before the slump. Uh, these guys are in serious danger of being out of Parliament, being a wasted vote, and it's going to be one of the tragedies of this election, uh, but one of the feistiest and most fun MPs in Parliament, uh, who's a million times better than most of our colleagues, and, and you uh, won't, won't be back. And you're I'll be back. You're talking about Madame Fox here. That's okay. Right. You, you, yeah, okay, okay, yeah. okay. Yeah, okay. Yeah, yeah, it's yeah, a real shame. Yeah, 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 yeah. yeah, you yeah, are, yeah, you, yeah, he is, yeah. you are Dr. Death, man. You love <laughs> well, telling people what they're out of boat. You say it's tragic and you're very sorry. I can't help it, John, because I'm a recovering electrical engineer um, and I just look at the numbers yeah, and but, they're not but good for you, you guys. You, but, have, yeah. you have the good grace of National rolling over and say please vote and yeah. get this boy in. Yeah, I do believe Because without X in the long term they have no coalition partner 
uh, and they're stuffed. So you know it, we work together yeah, very well, no and it's called it's that. called having a political James, strategy. James, yeah. so you've just told James Shaw that he's leaving Parliament. James Shaw is looking across at you as you speak and nodding in agreement with what you're saying. No rubbish. And, and, I'm, and, I'm, I'm smiling because I, <laughs> I, 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 I hear this from David pretty much every day. Um, we find ourselves on forums all over the place, and he just it's something that he kind of bangs on because it's useful to his political. Yeah, yeah, yeah. You know, I, I used to work with someone who no, used to say, "We're I'm, all going to die." No, I'm trying. And they were right. right. This is this is this yeah. is a bit of cross-party assistance. I'm trying to help green voters who are in danger of wasting their oh, vote. Oh wow. my goodness! From the goodness of your heart. That's just how I roll. James Shaw, are you too reasonable? I'm looking. I've got here a New Zealand Herald article, and the headline is "Greens Unveil Poverty Plan for 100,000 Kids." Right. Yes. Do you know what the date of that is? Yeah, 2014. Well, it's 2011. Oh, it's the 11th August one. 2011. Okay. Yeah. Six years before Bill English had We've that been both. Setting the exactly. agenda since ages ago. <laughs> yeah, the other, me. Now, the, now, yeah. yeah, exactly. Yeah, Sorry, Mara. Ma, so exactly. Ma, yeah, yeah, absolutely. Thank you. And it's okay, been so, in our coalition um, agreement absolutely. since the very first day we walked in. Yeah, and I'll talk to you about what well, look, has I'm, been meaningfully achieved. I'm, I'm but not sure anyone's campaigning in favour of child poverty. No, no, the issue is how do you solve it? And that's why there's been so little progress. I do want to talk to James Shaw, though, about the fact that you seem to be way ahead of what we Everyone might. on everything. We take that back. Thank okay. you. Okay. And now, of <laughs> yeah. course, everyone's saying, yes, theoretically, yeah. we want to do something about the climate, but it didn't make a single appearance in the latest debate. No, it did not. No, I was pretty a disappointed by that, actually. Okay. So how do you make that relevant when everyone is talking about housing, about child poverty? By getting into government. So, I mean, we are the only party that has made uh, climate change the centrepiece of our election campaign. You wouldn't know uh, and, it. We, and we know that people, uh, you know, don't kind of, you know, there's a lot of people who kind of aren't, they're worried about it, but it's like it's not very high up their list of um, priorities. But that is the point of, uh, you know, um, a plural pluralistic uh, political environment is that you've got parties who say actually this is important. Well hold on, hold on, and I've got a question for you then about climate change. If climate change is your is your pivotal uh, campaigning strategy, yeah. the thing you care most about, the Globe organisation of which we are all members mm -hmm. in a cross party agreement even was me. headed, even David <laughs> even, me, yeah. even yeah. David was headed by Kennedy Graham yeah. who you've now got rid of. I didn't get rid of him, he walked out. And then wanted to come back and you fellas said no thank you very much. The, I mean, the, the thing is that climate change is larger than one person. Every political party is larger than one person. Uh, I have been leading on climate change, you know, for years, I get, uh, as have I, other, I, I uh, get, other MPs. I, I right? guess the so, point is, yeah. and, and I know you answered this and you said re-elect the, the Greens, yeah. but it strikes me that people either plagiarise the Greens or, or, or completely ignore your central policy when yeah. it's convenient to do so. And your job is to assert the relevance. That's what yes, and and to be and, in government. And, and, right? But are you achieving that? Are you achieving that connection with the electorate this time round? Ask me again on the twenty fourth uh, of September. No, I'm asking you now. So yes, actually, yes, we are, and I think that there has been a significant change in the last twenty years in terms of public opinion around climate change. It has now elevated to the point where people are really concerned about it that it does have a much broader constituency. Whereas there is actually a great deal of consensus in society now that but, didn't but exist only 10 years ago. Respect, James, I mean, and if you look at the current Canada Prime Minister... Who, um, is non yeah, yeah, hold on a sec, just so we'll yeah. come back to you, David. But um, if you look at the current Prime Minister, who only 10 years ago drove a tractor up the steps of Parliament to protest the idea that farmers might have to pay a small levy t in order to assist with agricultural emissions research, which his government you know, later on introduced... Uh, you know, I think that the, the things have changed, but no other party is making it the top of their political agenda. And I think for people who are saying, actually, if you look at the long term challenges facing uh, New Zealand and the world, of which climate change is clearly at the at the forefront, then that is why the Green Party needs do to be at the Do you have a statement about that, climate change refugees government. in your policy? Yes, we do. Car park. Yeah. And, okay, in fact, what, sorry. In fact, Marnam, I thank you for raising that. Well, we do we, too. We, so, so not just a statement, we've actually proposed creating a we new humanitarian visa category for, for Pacific uh, Islanders hello. who are displaced by rising that's, seas that's, because at the moment well. they're not recognised by uh, the United Nations refugee system. So, 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 so we that, want to get that started. So, that, so that, that's the highest priority for the Greens, right? Well, at the top of the list. David Seymour, yeah. what is it for you and ACT? Oh, it's housing and education and they go together. Um, you know, if you're worried about child poverty, uh, you've got to break the cycle with better education. But you've also got to recognise that the biggest cost that the poorest New Zealanders face 
You know, 30 years ago when we passed the RMA, the poorest New Zealanders were spending 27% of their income on housing. Now it's exactly double that to 54. So you wonder why there's stories about people living mm. in cars and garages, mm. uh, why we've got children literally dying mm. from being brought up in unhealthy homes, mm. uh, why we've got this generational divide of haves and have-nots, why you've got so much agitation about immigration. It all comes back to the fundamental problem that we build half as many houses as we built in the 1970s because of stupid council red tape and regulation. A absolutely. Under can I just interject there, there because yeah, you sure. made a really passionate and compelling case on behalf of what we might lazily describe as an underclass, and I'm sorry for you, I hate that term, but it's a shorthand that works uh, when you haven't got much time. You've also been part of propping up a government under which all the indicators you describe have got worse over the past few years. Mm. Haven't they? Well, the, the key to a sane life, John, uh, is to focus on the things you can change uh, and, and, and let other people deal with the things you can't. If you look at what I've done in government, uh, we've been there to say, look, you've got to fix this housing problem. You've got to replace our land use planning laws. I used to have discussions with John Key about this and say, when are we going to sort it? He'd say, well, we've got 59 votes and you've got one. Do you know anyone else in Parliament who will help us replace our land use planning regime. Now unfortunately, and I hate to say it Marama, but these guys decided it was more important that the iwi got consulted about the building of homes than building homes for the poorest people absolutely. in New Zealand. And, and, that's yep, that's what you guys did. And you have consigned, you have consigned no, no. people to poverty and so, no, no. Uh, by refusing no, no. to allow those that things to occur. Absolute what, what, rubbish. How well did you vote you for the RMA reforms or not? The amendment? That yeah. we negotiated? Yep, that you weakened at every step of the way. <coughs> I mean, so the so that, got so it that if, any, if anything, <coughs> uh, if any, you stalled it for two years. You and didn't we stall it for two yes, years. Yes, you did. And no, we, we didn't now, do we now have Resource well, Management I'm Act sorry, reforms but you weren't that in are going to go okay. Okay. nowhere. Mother uh, Fox. I absolutely was. Mother Fox, can and the I fact ask is you? That you guys weren't on board for serious That's reform rubbish. of land use regulation that would allow us to build homes and alleviate poverty for your people and the rest of New Zealand. And it is a shame. It's a shame. Don't you know, stop, 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 Hey, hang on a second. You no, got, no, no. You our flagship time. policy, you partnership say, school, and nobody takes you is seriously, David, by the you EWI say it from okay. your enlightened, Fox, entitled position. Madam Fox, uh, personal attacks again. What is well, the is thing true. you are most proud of achieving in your association with a national-led government? Um, increased spending for Fano Water, for one, uh, so that it can be rolled out to help the thousands of families, 45,000 families, in the last three years alone. We've had um, over 300 people helped into their own homes, 76 new entities just in the South Island of Māori who came and said, this is where we're at, How much here's money? our aspiration. How much money, Fano Water? Yeah, what is oh, about $170 million a year. How many people helped into their new homes? Uh, about 300. What about the Māori Housing Network? How much, on, how on, much money? On. How but much hold money? on. We're not housing New Zealand. I know. I'm not the housing I, I, minister. I know. I'm just, so, wait, I'm no, just, no, no, no. I'm let's saying, clarify this. Let's because, scrutinise yes, on a bang okay. for your buck basis. Let's mm. scrutinise on a bang for your buck about mm. the people who have moved themselves out of poverty and into mm. uh, job creation, the people who have moved themselves out of poverty and into a safe, warm home, the people who have had their homes fixed, the people who have gone off their addictions and are working to strengthen in their families to improve the life for their for their children. We have helped 45,000 families for the different reasons that they've come to us for. And that might be to find them a home. It might be to help them get a job. It might be to overcome addictions. But it is phenomenal and it is a game changer for the way in which this country does its business. Because now you have whānau water groups popping up all over the country because they know that's the way to do things. Okay. Why should people vote for you, David Seymour? Why should oh, people? Oh, because look, we need to fix housing, we need to fix education, and the answer is not more tax and government spending. The answer is more entrepreneurship, cutting red tape and regulation, allowing New Zealanders to provide themselves and create the schools that will educate the next generation. And what's more, I'm the only person on this stage that can say that a party vote for ACT confidently will bring more ACT peace 
act MPs into government and make a difference. That's rubbish. Um, You're um, not the only one who can say that. James, oh, I'm yeah? going to, Madam Fox, I'm going to give you the last word, right? How's James? it going to She always gets the last <laughs> yeah, word no matter yeah, what. Yeah. <laughs> you have met, yes, you've met yeah, Madam yeah. <laughs> Yes, James Shaw, the second I would last say, word. Okay, Why so should people vote Green? Because if you want a government that is committed to making New Zealand a world leader in the fight against climate change, if you want a government that is committed to cleaning up all of our rivers and to ending poverty in this country once and for all, if you want a Labour-led government with Jacinda Ardern as Prime Minister, but you do not want Winston Peters calling the shots, then I would say give your That's party vote to the Green Party. Uh, and they'd need some mates because by current polling, you're not going to get there with you two on your own. And in order to get um, Winston out of the picture... Are you, are you saying picture, you, can, you could go into a coalition with other national we labour? Could. Full stop. So of that, course okay. we could. Clear and explicit. Look, right. look I've said it before. So Imagine Jacinda, yeah. Metedia, Hooks it, or somebody sure. and uh, Marama Fox, three wahine tour running the country. We'd change the world. But that's not the only option that this country has and they need to get across the polls first. If the Māori Party aren't there, there is no guarantee... That that inside any of those parties that have been talked about, that Māori issues will be made front and foremost to addressing the great disparity and inequality that currently exists in this country. And if we don't make the right changes now, in 2050 when we are 50% brown, where our population of Māori and Pacifica are, are 23 years old, medium age, we will be the backbone of this country and the economic driving force of this country. We have to make the decisions now that will help get us there. What are those decisions? Oh, no, 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 here we go. Let's let's hold on, hold on, no. Oh, really? Let me tell you. Yes, you're giving me a whole statement with lots of emotion and no detail. Hold on, hold on. Would you want me to give the statement? I can tell you how we're going to do it. Now, MMP... Uh, offers us. I was in the gallery pre MMP. I was a young political reporter pre MMP. No, you haven't I, aged I, I, I know. No. How, yeah. You have and to tell po- us what moisturiser you use. Yeah. <laughs> 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 and the point I'm making is that it is much broadly a reflection of New Zealand now, mm. thanks to MMP and thanks to the fact that people like you three and your parties are in Parliament. So it is an MMP election and you have reminded us today of what ACT stands for, what the Māori Party stands for and what the Greens stand for. Thank you for being with us tonight. Good luck for the rest of your campaign. Thanks, John. Thanks for having us and, on the show. Yeah, well, it's been our pleasure. And on behalf of everyone on the Checkpoint team, thank you for listening or watching and thank you to our political party leaders for coming in tonight. Thanks, thank John. You, John. And thanks for the cake.